Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on the higher end of the Quantum line. This is the Quantum Cabo uh, PTS. <laughs> it gets an award for the most uh, initials used. It's the CSP40 PTS. So uh, a lot of people saw this one on a preview and said, could you, uh, could you do that one for us? And I checked my library and I hadn't done one. So uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by removing the exterior pieces and parts. Let's start with the spool. We're going to take the adjuster knob off and that'll give us access to remove the spool here. This is a top drag system. You'll see all the drag washers are up top. We'll come back to that in a little while. That reel seems relatively clean there. And uh, next up, what we can do is we can remove the handle. Now, normally you just assume that because the side is spinning that the handle is uh, a screw and handle. But you know what? It's always better to check because sometimes there's a screw underneath here that's holding a through shaft. In this case, it's not. So I'll we'll go ahead and remove that. But sometimes the, that screw is hiding there. And while you can wreck the reel, if you... Uh, try and do what we're doing right here, which is to remove the handle by turning it in a clockwise uh, direction. Next thing what you want to do is you want to look for the case. And in this particular fishing reel, the case ends below the rotor. So that means we can remove the three side plate screws without uh, removing the rotor first. We'll go ahead and do that. That's got a flat bladed screw on it. Some kind of machine tool. There's a, uh, a circle center and two wider portions where you can catch that with your screwdriver. So I'll go ahead and, and do that. And then what I do when I take the pieces and parts off is I put those into a parts tray. I use the bottom of a uh, fast food container. That's my thing of choice. Those of you that have been watching a lot of videos know I go through all kinds of parts trays. I use the bottoms of uh, milk jugs and other things. And, Lately, I just had a couple of fast food containers. I don't know what that says about my diet, but it says about my parts tray. All right, this is the second one. There's one more to go on this. And uh, the Cabos have a good reputation. One of the things you can see in the parts by itself, maybe you can see, maybe you can't, the handle says stainless steel on it. Well, if you're using a stainless steel handle, you're way ahead of the guys that are using steel handles or plastic handles or other descriptives it's going to cost you a lot more for that and uh, well that's quality pieces and parts generally wind up in quality reels I like the Cabos this this are nice and smooth so probably top of the line here for it this is not the the current model of it but it is a nice example of a Cabo reel and uh, right below that or or below that in terms of their uh, good better best strategy you would find the Boca all right so the side plate comes off next and you can see it needs a cleaning underneath here. There's some dirt and grime on the cross wine block. But overall, this is pretty much set up as a traditional uh, spin fishing reel, or at least as best as I can tell at the moment it is. I haven't worked on one of these. I've worked on the Bocas. But uh, let's go ahead and get the... Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. So there was a little bit of play I noticed in the shaft before, and, and I can see where the play is. That, that screw that I went to take out is very loose. So I don't know if that's boat vibration that's doing that or something else, but that should be nice and tight to hold that cross wind block and axle shaft together. That piece goes into my parts tray. Now you can take a hold of the cross wind block and pull up on the axle shaft to remove it. When you remove it, go ahead and wipe it down. Make sure that it's free of any debris and uh, you can set that aside. All right, this is a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way now. We're going to open up the reel and you don't want to put pieces back in the wrong place or have any other issues arise because you couldn't remember the orientation of a piece or so on. So we're going to start by, let's see if we can't get that bearing off. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. And the reason for that is that the handles, if they're over tightened, peen the main gear. But I think I got it up a little bit. We should be there. We, go. we got it off now. Just a little bit of leverage. You don't want to do too much leverage there. All right, we're going to take that off. We'll clean that in a moment. Now we should be able to remove the back. And we have kind of the same issue going on here, don't we? We have the back is kind of peened. And 
you just had a little bit of a uh, an explosion here. All the pieces and parts came out all at once. Well, if you understand the mechanics of the wheel, you don't have much of an issue. If you don't understand it and you just have one of those oops moments, well then what you want to do is you want to go ahead at this point and pull the schematic for the wheel. That schematic will show you a burst diagram of how those pieces and parts go and there will be a tremendous assist to you as you go to reinstall. Maybe you've had that happen. Maybe that's why you're watching the video right now as you're saying I've had that oops moment and uh, hopefully uh, I can get back on track with the YouTube video. Well you can do that too. But I can tell you from my library and my experience and everybody else's not every question gets answered that way and sometimes that burst diagram is a good way to get you back on track and uh, maybe save you some time surfing the internet for a solution there. Alright, I wiped off all the old grease on my crosswind block. I do recall when I took the crosswind block off that this long tail section was to the left, pointing upwards. Alright, while I have it, I have the crosswind gear. Just going to wipe that off as well. I'm going to inspect all of the teeth on the gear, make sure that they're okay. And uh, if, there's, if it's not broken, chipped, cracked, or otherwise, you're in good condition. All right, we have the two bearings. They appear to be the same bearings. They're shielded. They're not uh, sealed. I'm going to wipe off the dirt. Now, when I was testing, I didn't hear any bearing noise at all, so I'm going to take that as a positive, that those bearings are in good condition. And I'm going to just throw some oil onto the bearings. I'm going to just let that work its way through as we uh, continue with the cleanup. There's one more piece we want to clean. That's the back end of the gear. This looks like it's got some kind of uh, upgraded metal. I'm not sure what they call it. Upgraded me metals are never uh, ending. I just saw when I was reading the other day, I actually have the reel. It's an Ocean City Zephyr from uh, the 1930s. And its claim to fame was the new metal Zephyloi. And I have no idea what Zephyloi is as a metal, but uh, the manufacturers have been claiming new improved metallurgy for seemingly forever. So that's gone on 80 years on that reel since the introduction of Zephyloi. And uh, we can see other things. We got Hagen and other things today. I'm going to assume that it's a combination of being soft and being hard and having flexibility but remaining rigid and well you get what I mean right each, each metal has a little bit of a different property all right I just uh, cleaned up the old dirty grease behind there I'm checking the teeth on both sides of this gear you want to check the teeth that are going to be driving the um, crosswind gear and you want to check the teeth that are driving the pinion gear those all appear to be pretty good so I'm going to put those in the box and now I can go up top to remove the rotor there's two screws here that are going to be holding that on. I just noticed as I put the main gear over, the main gear shim just uh, came off as well. So we're going to put that into the case there just so we don't lose that. Again, if you didn't know the geometry of the reel, you can go to the schematic and see where that belongs. There's two small screws here. I'll put those on my table after I remove them. Just make sure that they're the same size. You always want to check. Every now and then a manufacturer will just kind of throw you a curveball. Those two are the same. We can remove the cap. I'm going to take those two screws, put them right into the cap before I put those into my parts tray. And now we have a little rotor uh, nut. And I think maybe what I can do with the rotor nut is I can get that with a, uh, a, a little box wrench, which I can. And that rotor nut comes off in a traditional counterclockwise manner. So let's take that off. Put that in my box, uh, parts tray. Now I should be able to remove the rotor. There is some sand under here, so I just want to take another paper towel. I got one sitting there already. I want to just make sure that we get all of that off. There's a stud that comes through that's for your trip lever. And I tested this before. The bale is working fine. So all I want to do is flood the seams of your bale 
on both sides and that trip lever and just work it back and forth just so that it works in there. A lot of times these things will just dry out and you get some micro sands and the light that come in there that become the issue and uh, well, if you can take care of them that way you're all the better for you. Next up then we have a long uh, or a big uh, hectagonal clip holding this in. I think that's just a shield for the anti-reverse. I'll find out. And then I believe we have to kind of pull that up as well. So I'm just going to use a, uh, a utility knife here to, to kind of work that away. And we have the old traditional um, spring-loaded anti-reverse gear here and out a little bit to make sure oh, we got it off now so let's continue with that it's, uh, just drop that out hold that thing it's important that you do it that way we have uh, three screws now holding it in fortunately I'm not seeing I am seeing the override here. There's an override. So when we go to reset that uh, that bearing there, we're going to need that override. So let's take the second one out. And we'll show you the other way to do this then. That just fell out, which is okay. Those things are very temperamental. And they've come a long way with the solid units now. Thank goodness that there uh, are the single AR clutches. Of course, the thing that's gone away from that is that the AR clutch cannot be overridden now. Just looking for the third screw here. We're just going to keep these on the table as we do this service. So we have a little bit of grease that was holding that anti-reverse collar in there. Let's go ahead and do that. Clean that up. Clean underneath. And then let's go ahead and do what we did anyway. There's a collar stack with some tension washers. Here's your bearing. And what we can do, I, I don't think I would have been foolhardy just to have left it in place and do what I was going to do, but that's okay. We're just going to pull out what little grease is there. This appears to be a stainless steel pinion gear. That's very nice condition. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load that pinion gear up with fishing reel grease. I use pen precision reel grease and I recommend that you use fishing reel grease. I really don't care which one you use but please go ahead and do that. I also use a artist brush to apply that that tends to not shed the hairs. So go ahead and do that as well. This is your stack for your collar for your anti-reverse gear. I put that on too soon. I've already oiled that bearing, but for illustrative purposes, we'll go do that again. <coughs> bearing goes on. Stack goes on. This can get reinstalled. Once that service is completed, we'll do that by finding the cavity for this and sitting that in there. Make sure that you seat it into the case below here. And we can go grab those three screws again. And we can put them in. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're a little stuck. Uh, go ahead and uh, leave that question in the comments section. I will try to answer that question for you. Try to get you unstuck and back on your way. If it involves uh, a real repair, try to make you a little bit more knowledgeable. If it has a question uh, on some subject matter that I may know, maybe you're kind of curious about Quantum and uh, the company Quantum or a particular series of reels, the Cabo and the Boca kind of reels and so on. All right, let's put that last one in. Okay, as long as all those pieces and parts just fell out, let's go show you how to rebuild this uh, 
this roller drag system. This one's not as bad as the ones that have the springs attached to it that you might find in, in the Okumas and the like, but uh, we'll show you how to do this one nonetheless. You should have a carrier, you have the internal piece. Now this is the one, for the most part, that always gets greased up and causes a slip in the anti-reverse. So you want to take a nice clean towel and you want to make sure that that outer rim is nice and dry. All right, we'll show you how to do this then. There's a carrier. The carrier has a slot on it right here. The slot is going to go over the little stud that is on that anti-reverse override switch. It's right there. Uh, you might see it move, you might not, I don't know. Please don't take that spring off. That is one of the most difficult springs to, to reset should that ever come off. We're going to take the carrier. You'll find that slot underneath. Go ahead and put that carrier on and then rotate it until you feel it lock in with the stud. The next thing you want to do is get the um, collar that's going to go over your pinion gear and seat that inside the carrier. With that in, use your tweezers to pick up each of those little roller bearings. Make sure they're dry. Again, grease is an enemy here. And you're going to start seating them around that carrier. Now most of the time they're going to stick. And you won't have an issue there. If you do, you're just going to have to kind of play around with it. These roller bearings look like they have an indentation on one side and um, flat on the other. I, um, I don't think it means anything other than maybe how it was machined. I don't think you have to put them one way or another. I guess if this thing fails, we'll go back and set them one way or another. But I think it's probably just how it uh, came off the assembly line when it was being machined. And uh, it may just be that. All right, then I'm going to put my sixth one in. So we got, got pretty lucky there. They all just kind of sat down nice. If it was a pet, I guess you would say good dog. I'm going to push them all down to make sure they're seated on the bottom now. Just like that. And now this is the one that always gets everybody messed up. It <laughs> gets me messed up. They're not even points on this. There's a corresponding offsets. But what you will notice on this reel, and you may have to do it yourself otherwise if you don't find it on yours, one side of this carrier does have a, a dot or a dimple in one of those points. That's the one that lines up with the hole next to the override switch. So we had the override switch was right here. Just if you have any questions, go back and look where your override switch was. That's the override switch. And this is the hole next to it. That's the one where that dimple goes in. It was important to leave it in the off position because you're going to notice that's not a perfect circle inside the ring. They have little ramps. You'll notice that it starts narrow and goes wide, starts narrow and goes wide, so on. That's because that's, those little bump outs are for where these roller bearings are going to go. So take your, your trim ring or your collar ring and it should just slip right over like that. If it didn't slip over like that, you don't have it aligned properly or the bearings aren't sitting in there the right way. Well, that's how you do it. Okay. <laughs> now. The, there's a washer that goes on top of that to uh, hold all of that down when you go to reinstall the rotor. This one, it's kind of interesting. I actually uh, decided in between all of this to go to find the schematic for the wheel. I pulled it out and I noticed on the schematic, there's a diagram there that shows you that one side of that cap has four little dimples in it. Well, that's not the side, right? That's the underside. This is the side with the four dimples, and that schematic is showing me that the four dimples go up. So that's how you set your, your cap or collar or whatever they choose to call this thing. And then we're going to go back and find that uh, the trim ring clip. Only your trim ring is probably called a collar or something like that. And press it down. All right, let's see how we did. We should have over and over right now. Let's go to the, the hold position, turn it, and then try to back pedal. And we have a nice functioning 
anti-reverse. As you can see, I'm trying to do it as I pull back the, uh, the real stops. Well, a better indication of that is to put the rotor back on. So we'll go ahead and do that. Get your rotor nut. And this is the sequence you're going to put, even if you didn't rebuild that uh, or clean out that anti-reverse, this would be the sequence you would do that. The rotor goes on, and then you must put the tie-down cap next. You can't, uh, you can't go around another way and then try to put the axle shaft in without having this cap installed. So if you've tightened your nut the right way, you're going to have an alignment here with your two holes for the screws. And then I'm just going to grab a Phillips head screwdriver and go ahead and put those two screws in. And then we'll show you, we'll do it with the rotor on, you'll see it a little bit easier about how the anti-reverse is now breaking. Those are friction driven. If you get oil on them, uh, you're going to have a problem. It's not going to hold and you're going to get a skip. All right, you see we're running fine this way and an immediate stop on the way back. That's the way it should be functioning. That's how you rebuild that. All right, let's just go put the rest of the reel back. It's not that hard to do. You want to grab your pieces, make sure that you relube them. We're going to start by that cross line block. We'll get some grease on the back. You've checked the teeth already. We did that on the outbound side. I may not have mentioned that we did it on the outbound side, but one of the things I do is I take the pieces off. I want to make sure that all of the teeth are good. They're in alignment. They're not chipped or cracked and so on. Make sure that your bearing is in there before you put the oscillation gear in. You won't get that bearing in after that oscillation gear is set. I previously oiled that bearing, so <laughs> no need to do that. A little bit of grease onto the underside of the crosswind block. You do not need to put grease onto the front side of it. Some folks choose to do that, but it's not necessary. It looks like there's a little bit more cleaning up going on on the main gear here, so we'll just take a moment to wipe some of that old stuff off. And again, I've checked the teeth here. I want to make sure that they're all uh, in line and not cracked and you check those teeth from two sides you check it from the top and you check it this way Make sure all of the points are even if the gear is not warped. Well, there was no indication of that when uh, when it came time to uh, Service the reel so I'm not too worried about that when I did that initial test I didn't find any kind of wump wump going on there and uh, That would usually indicate that you've got a an out of round uh, gear I imagine that the price of this reel and the materials used, that's probably not subject that much to warping, but it could occur. All right, there's a flat side on the bottom of your axle shaft. Now with that collar installed, go ahead and put that axle shaft in. And then bring it down so that the hole in the axle shaft aligns with the hole in your crosswind block. And then go into your parts tray, get that little Phillips head screw there. This is the one when we took the reel apart was loose. It was, seemed to be like there was a lot of play up and down in the axle shaft. Let's tighten this one now and see if that play is gone. Yeah, that play is gone. I'm trying to pull as much as I can on that and we are we're very firm there. <coughs> All right. Not much going on. There is a shim bearing on here, a shim washer for the bearing. I don't know if you can see that. But it's there. It's a silver one against the gold background. Make sure that that goes there. Then we have our bowing. It's a metal cased reel. You can hear that as it falls. And then all we have to do now is put the case back on. Make sure you get a nice snap like we just had. Check the ridges of the case now. Make sure that they're all tight. If there's anything binding, don't go to the next step, which is to install the screws. That doesn't make any since you're going to just tighten down something and cause something to go go amiss. So let's get that out of the way. These screws are flat bladed screw with a hole in the middle. I don't know the, the tool that I would use other than a flat bladed screwdriver, but this is kind of annoying. You can't get a very good grip with the flat bladed screw uh, driver. And uh, well, you want to stop or 
Hope that you don't risk damaging it as you're doing this. There's two more screws here. And we'll take a look up top at the drag system. We'll put it all together and we'll make sure that this reel is ready to go fishing again. So this one is the of the good, better, best series of Quantums. This is the best. The, the better would be the Boca. And you have a host of other reels, starting with the optics, which is the value line, and uh, going right up the chain after that. But the Boca and the Cabo at this time were the uh, the best. They were retailing. I think this one was probably retailing certainly over a hundred dollars. This is several years old now, so I don't know exactly where in the uh, piece it did, but uh, it did. All right, this says sealed. There is a uh, kind of a cross-hatched disc underneath here. I guess that's going to help shed the water. You also have a nice kind of a plug that's going over this. This is kind of an interesting drag system. It's not a, a six drag system. It's a seven drag system, I guess. <coughs> I remember this one. I think this is a very hard plastic washer. We're going to find out. And then you would have the traditional six washer behind it. To service this, you're going to take off the little ring here. This goes into my parts tray. They're just too easy to lose. So we should have a thick washer here. That's not a washer. It's a tie down more than anything. And then go ahead and go in here and get the rest of these out if you can. Well, that one just shot. You have to go find that. Back in a moment. Looks like we've had these kind of touched with hot sauce. <coughs> All kinds of little crazy tools on my bench from whatever. Got a little dental pick here. We'll see if we can't pull them out that way. There we go. And we have a little bearing or something holder here that goes on the bottom. That just came out. Okay, I paused the video for a moment because I had that one get stuck on my shirt and I couldn't find it. We've got it now. It looks like some residual from the old uh, uh, Quantum hot sauce. Just get that out of there. Just because it might be holding some grease. Well, this is the one I was kind of thinking about as the system. It's actually seven washers rather than six. One is acting as a cap washer. The other thing that's unique about this is that it has two of the eared washers and one of the keyed washers rather than the other way around. And it also, because it's a seven, it's going to start out, it has four hard washers, so it's going to start out with the hard washer first. Now, if you had any question about that, the way, the way you go is to your schematic, and the schematic shows that it's the first one in is an eared washer and uh, we work up from there. So the ear washer goes in first. That holds the spool when you're going under um, uh, load under under the drag. Then you have a uh, washer. I'm going to use grease. Uh, I'm going to use oil rather than grease on these. And just a few dots. The middle one is the keyed washer. <coughs> Second one, I'm not quite sure. This uh, it seems like a carbon tax or a carbon tax kind of derivative washer. I'm not quite sure what that is. I'm going to go for the third of the keyed washers, the last of the drag washers, and then that heavy hard washer that went up on top. So that is your drag stack. Again, we have a spring clip like you saw on that uh, roller bearing. Lock that in. Fortunately, these, these are not very high tension springs here. And make sure they're all in that slot or cavity. There you go. So that's the set on that. We can load that onto our reel. Go ahead and tighten that down. Now this has got one of those little crossbars underneath a pin that's going to hold that um, spool to the axle shaft. Make sure that it's uh, on that crossbar, otherwise you won't be able to start your, your uh, adjuster knob. Tighten it. If it works, back it off. Let's go ahead and get the handle and let's go do that test then. See how we did. 
It's a nice handle. It says stainless steel on it. All right, let's give it a ride. That ride's nice and easy. It should. How about that backstop? Oh, yeah, look at that. Nice uh, showing you how to do the instant anti-reverse and actually get it to hold. Let's give it the override. Yep, you can fight that fish with the override capacity. And let's go back to make sure the switch is working. It is. How about the bail? Bail trips nice and easily. And this one's ready to go back out and go fishing again. So that's it. That's your Cabo. It's uh, got all those initials next to it. It's a PTS. I believe that means Performance Tune System. It's the CSP, Cabo SP, I guess, 40 PTS. So they, they weren't afraid to use the, all the letters of the alphabet in naming that one. All right, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe uh, during the pandemic and for your life commitment to uh, helping others. To all, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle wishing you great fishing. Have a nice day.